Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I don't think he planned ahead to have the perfect answer. He probably didn't spend six Wednesday nights in Lent trying to piece together the perfect response. He was caught off guard, put on the spot, taken by surprise. The answer he gave was still pretty good. He used more than seven words, but I guess we won't hold that against him. Who do you say that I am? Jesus asked the disciples, and Peter spoke up on their behalf. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it was a good answer. Jesus himself commended it, saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Uh, it's a good reminder that when we confess uh, the gospel faithfully, it's not because we are so wise that we figured it out. It's not because we're so smart or clever. It's because God has come to us. It's because God, through his word, has revealed himself to you and me. Peter also knew what it was like to give the wrong answer. That night, Jesus... Oh, can we go back to I messed up? That night, Jesus was betrayed and arrested. The disciples had gathered, scattered in fear, and Peter was again caught off guard. Again, he was put on the spot, but this time didn't turn out so well. Three times in the courtyard, he was asked about the connection to Jesus, and three times Peter denied his Lord. I don't know the man... And the rooster crowed. Well, maybe Peter was thinking about these two different answers when he wrote what we call 1 Peter chapter 3. I mean, from what we call 1 Peter. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope you have that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Well, there's a whole bunch of ways in which we could give answers uh, to the faith that we have or what God has done for us in Christ. When Jesus asked Peter, but who do you say that I am? He could have given a variety of different answers. Um, different people and different times and places probably need to hear it in different ways as well. We probably need more than simply one way of confessing the gospel if we are prepared to be prepared to share the hope that we have as, as Peter encourages us. So uh, we've got a couple of examples uh, of ones that we've been given, but I also wanted to open up to here at least, and maybe we'll be able to uh, put a, uh, does anybody else have any, an example that we don't have up there you want to add for the gospel in seven words or less? Okay, think. Let us know if you come up with one. Otherwise, it's okay if you don't, but wanted to open it up. George. Sherry. Did you have one, Sherry? Yes. You can give us the eight words. You can give us the eight words. <laughs> okay. Jesus loves you and died to save you. Um. So um, here's, oh, good, yeah, we got, um, I don't know what is going on with my thing. Um, so here's a couple that we got, and I'll, I'll read them off. Different people came up with these. Forgiveness undeserved and love always served. Jesus is the solution to life's problems. Missed the mark. Jesus didn't. Believe. Receive. God rescues me, repent, and join us. Donovan? Jesus is the loving Savior of all. Jesus is the loving Savior of all. Okay, that's good, good. Sherry? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Bill? Jesus, the Son of God, believe him. 
Yeah, I like that one too. Yeah, I mean, and that sort of highlights not just uh, believe in him, but believe him. In other words, believe what he says. You know, so we, we sometimes have this concept of we believe in God, but I like what that draws out to me is you're believing, you believe what he says. He says something, he must know what he's talking about, so you believe him. Um, yeah. So what um, I wanted, you, the one rule is you can't talk about the one you put up there, but I, I think it's helpful if we, what, is there anything, as now that we've, you've had him in front of you for a minute, um, what you, that you appreciate or something that it draws out that maybe you didn't think about first? Can we go to the first one, forgiveness? Um, because my, there we go, forgiveness undeserved and love always served. There's a couple different, again, if you have something that uh, you like about that one or something you didn't think about, or maybe a situation in which this would be a great answer to somebody, to a situation or a person um, where this might be a good, any of those, would take a variety of feedback. But I think it's the goal here is to help us think about it in a personal way and think about as we're talking to people, how we could say these things. So we've come up with seven words, but how in a conversation even might the, this sentiment or this confession um, be helpful? Um, or who might it help? Uh, and what do you, so what do you like about it or appreciate about it? What's something you didn't think about? Um, or where might this be a, really helpful place to make this kind of confession. Or thoughts on this one? Yeah, okay, yeah. Someone who, who feels the weight of sin or just failure in general or... Okay, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people in the world, all of us probably at some points, uh, but there's a lot of people who live that way, unsure, uh, n knowing that maybe they don't, they, they've made mistakes and feeling the pressure of judgment, but not knowing that forgiveness is not something we've earned. It's something given. All right, let's uh, go to the next one. Jesus is the solution to life's problems. How, when, what situation, or what do you... Claire, what do you have? Okay, I, I, I think this one's real personal and uh, that Jesus isn't just a, it's not just a, an intellectual belief, but that Jesus is there when we have problems and we don't know what to do, that uh, he offers us uh, a way to a, a way out, or a way of, in general, the world and all the problems we have. Uh, I often think of, of Christianity or of following Christ as an alternative to the world, and an alternative way of going about things. And the way Jesus tells us to live life is different than than lots of different than, than the solutions that lots of people offer. Other things that jump out. Let's go to the next one then. Missed the mark. Jesus didn't believe, receive. Where, what situation or people might this be good for? Or where, where does it bring out? What does it highlight? Donovan? Yeah, you know, so when we try, this is maybe a little bit different than just simply uh, feeling the weight of your sin, more like uh, think, you know, trying to do a really good job and not, not meeting what you wanted. Even you're striving for excellence and you didn't mar meet it, or you, you miss an opportunity. Um, or again, you think of individual conversations you have or opportunities and, and it feels like maybe you didn't fail but it just feels like it was a missed opportunity. And uh, the reminder that it's not by our works, again, in a slightly different way, but by God's grace. And 
It's as simple as, I like the two that it's got, you know, it's three quick sentences and the last couple sentences are pretty simple. Believe, receive, you know, straightforward, pretty not complicated um, and, and simple in the sense that we can believe and receive. It's not a work. It's something that God asks us to do and we can respond in faith. And when we believe, we receive um, what God gives us. Uh, let's go to the next one then. God rescues me. Repent and join us. What do you, anything jump out at you about that one or like or where it might fit in a good situation? Okay, that's the idea. Yeah, so, yeah, it, I, it, it brings out the community aspect of, you know, that it's not only an individual thing, but uh, an invitation, and it's uh, us, uh, part of something new. Yeah, it's supposed to be kind of join us, God's people, the church, a congregation, where we know what God's done for us, and uh, we want, want you to join us. Any other? I think that was. Um, so I think the, the advantage to, to, to doing this is it forces us to think about it in, in a, a personal way. And it's always good. I think to think about how to say this, how to communicate our faith, not just what we believe, but kind of what does it mean for me or what can it mean uh, for, for others as well. Um, and I hope it helps drive home the point that the gospel's not just a story. I love the story aspect of, of the gospel and I love telling the story, but it's also you're in my story. And, it's, and thinking about what it means for us is a, a helpful exercise. Um, and if, uh, you know, if, we, if someone is complaining about how they feel like a, a failure or life isn't what they have planned, um, I think that happens to a lot of us or all of us at some point, and lots of people are in that spot and trying to find a way to speak to that person um, and communicate to them uh, that, you know, for instance, the one that said, we, we missed the mark. We all missed the mark, but Jesus didn't. You know, the world is full of people who, who've made mistakes, who haven't figured it all out, who've tried and, and failed. Um, but Jesus, when he came, he didn't. He, he hit the mark. He did things and lived and spoke and acted in, in the right sort of way, and he invites us to admit our failures, but also receive his forgiveness and restoration um, free of, of charge. Um, next week, we'll celebrate the most important events in all of history. Uh, and this would be thinking about summarizing the gospel in a, in a short amount of words is a great way uh, to think about explaining to your friends or families or neighbors the reason for Easter. Why do you care about going why do you bother to go to church in general? Or why would you go to this service on a Friday night uh, and um, talking about these things makes it a more, uh, if, we, if we use some phrases like this, might help us to communicate why it matters, not just what we're doing, but why we're doing it. Um, Jesus is, after all, he's not just for you and me. He's not only for others either. He's for us. Um, and my prayer is this coming Holy Week and throughout our lives uh, that you will see your Savior who, who suffers and dies and rises as not just a historical figure, but as your Savior, as the one who loves and cares for you. And I pray that his glorious resurrection will fill you with hope and that that hope overflows in your life and that others see that um, and that the Savior's passion and love for you and me uh, brings us
the help that we need um, and that he fills us with that same resurrection life, real life, joyful life, life the way it was meant to be. We pray that God may grant it all to us for all uh, of Jesus' sake. Uh, In Jesus' name, amen.